hello everyone today and uh, from here on the, in this series we will be looking into the python libraries for data science uh, in this series we will cover overview of python libraries for data science and uh, reading manipulating data in the third section we will be going over plotting of the data in the fourth we will see some descriptive statistics uh, these are the four very powerful and popular libraries of data science right, right now the first one is numpy then we have pandas scipy scikit-learn uh, there are other libraries um, which are visual libraries these are seabone and matplotlib these are used to plot and uh, present our data in a visual format okay let's see what is numpy numpy is it introduces objects for multi-dimensional arrays and matrices as well as functions that allow to easily perform advanced mathematical and statistical operations on those objects okay here we are saying multi-dimensional arrays and matrices these are arrays and matrices that a human brain cannot comprehend these are very high dimensional and uh, numpy helps us in dealing with them it also provides vectorization of mathematical operations on arrays and matrices which significantly improves the performance you may heard of vectorization in different courses or while running data science our vectorization is you know when we want to remove the explicit for loops in our algorithms uh, for example in logistic regression we if we want to remove the for loops we vectorize our uh, weights and uh, our input data that way we are able to remove the for loops this helps us speed up our algorithms and uh, many other libraries also depend on numpy for fast computation and this is a link of the official documentation the second library we have is scipy it is a collection of algorithms for linear algebra differential equations numerical integration optimization statistics and more they have taken the numpy and they have built a lot of algorithms on top of that and uh, they have you know, named this library the scipy library it is also part of the scipy stack we will look into detail of all these libraries uh, in this series so stay tuned and uh, this is the official link for the documentation you can check that out as well i'll put this in the description then we have pandas that's one of my favorites as well it adds data structures and tools designed to work with table like data if you have worked with relational databases like mysql you would be you would feel very familiar with pandas provides tools for data manipulation reshaping merging sorting slicing and aggregation of data it allows handling of missing data if you have any null values that you want removed in your data if there are any missing values if there is mis inappropriate data you can handle all these using pandas and uh, when we are saying data here it means a lot of data not something that your everyday excel can handle this data is in multiple uh, millions of rows and columns so we will see everything about pandas especially pandas we will cover it very deeply in this series and uh, yeah this is also the official documentation link i'll also put this in the description then we have scikit-learn it's a machine learning algorithms library you will find implementations of classification regression clustering model validation and a lot of things are included in this scikit-learn library it is built on top of numpy scipy and matplotlib so you can expect a lot of things coming out of the box in this library uh, moving on we have matplotlib it is a 2d plotting library we can plot different type of visualizations of our data using this library 
okay it produces publication quality figures in a variety of hard copy formats these are print ready figures that your matplotlib gives you and you can you know use them in your publications as well these are a set of functionalities similar to those of matlab if you have used matlab you'll probably have a good knowledge of matplotlib and uh, it provides line plots scatter plots bar charts histograms bar charts uh, whatever visual representation of the data you require you can use it with matplotlib this is a bit of low level uh, representations and uh, for more advanced visualizations we use seaborn which is i think the next but uh, these are relatively low level some effort needed to create advanced visualizations yeah here's an example of all these this is a scatter plot you may have seen it seen one of these somewhere and we have line plot histogram bar chart pie chart all these look like this and in this series we will see we will learn how to create things like these on our own using our own data okay so stay tuned the next library is seaborn as i already told you it is a bit advanced level than matplotlib it is based on matplotlib it provides high level interface for drawing attractive statistical graphics similar in style to popular ggplot2 library in r r is a, another data science language programming language that is used by the statisticians and mathematicians so yeah this was it for the introduction i want to also tell you all anyone watching this to please stay tuned subscribe like and share these we are coming with a lot of up-to-date and uh, very fun very interactive very practical videos for you uh, this channel will be totally an application first we will develop real world applications i'll even include applications in which we are integrating data science with web technologies and mobile applications we will you know implement data science models machine learning models and uh, we will integrate them with android and ios applications yeah so that is it for now thanks a lot for tuning in please don't forget to subscribe and share your one click will probably give me the motivation to keep going